All righty. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It is Wednesday, July 27th, and you're here with us for TK Live. This is our live show. We try to do it every other week. We get together here in the garage. There's Matthew, my brother, and there's Dad. Uh, and we'd like to and talk. And the mosquitoes. Yeah, a couple bugs. Yeah, too. a couple snuck in here. <laughs> you got and mosquitoes in here. Yeah, it's ugly. And we like to get together and talk about trucks. We like to cover the latest in truck news. We like to talk about what's going on with us and what's going on with the channel what we have upcoming, and uh, the biggest thing is we like to answer your questions. So right off the hop, if you have questions, toss them in the chat right now. We'll be happy to get to them uh, soon enough. And, and then what is going on with the channel? Well, yeah, actually, we just <laughs> hit 100,000 subscribers. You guys yeah. probably saw that if you watch. Uh, so thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Hopefully yeah. you're already subscribed. If you're not subscribed and you're watching, go hit the button right now. Please but, do. We're working on that second 100,000. Yeah, getting up to 100K was definitely a pretty big deal. Uh, it was pretty cool. And, uh, yeah, you know, we're still working on it. We're working hard, and we got lots of cool stuff coming. We're not taking it for granted. I'm working hard. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> true. I like to nap. Um, so what should we get to? Should we jump into our topic for today? Uh, the thing we, we've been talking about a ton lately is how much pickup trucks cost. And usually it's on the negative side. Usually it's, oh my gosh, this truck is $100,000, this truck's one hundred and twenty. dollars why is it so expensive? So we wanted to go and say, wait a second, what is the cheapest truck you can buy? Because there are still some honest-to-goodness affordable trucks out there, although they are kind of hard to come by. So uh, Matthew went and did some research. We used the build and price tool on all the different websites, and uh, we checked out all of the different pricing. So why don't you lead us off, Matt? Uh, we did Canada and the U.S. Why don't we start with Canada, and then we can kind of trickle the U.S. in there as well. Sure thing. And Which way are you going? Why don't we start smallest and work our way up to biggest, too? The smallest? Yes. Cheapest. Cheapest and oh. smallest. Oh, cheapest, so, smallest. Okay. In the compact pickup category. True. We pulled midsize too. Exactly. We have we have compact, midsize, oh, sorry, and you half to do ton. Compact. Yeah, 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 that's yeah. what I'm saying. Let's start small. Literally work smallest. Our way up. <laughs> that's what I said. <laughs> he did a lot of work apparently once to get it all out there. Okay. So case studies. All right. Compact trucks. Yes. Okay. All right. Go nuts. Well, there was only two, so it's a pretty short category. Yeah. So the Ford Maverick comes away with the absolute cheapest compact truck that you can buy today on the market. Here in Canada, you're looking at getting in at $27,750, or just a little over $29,000 after freight and PDI and those other fun things. And that is for the two-wheel drive hybrid, all the base options, we're talking steel wheels. And I went on the configuration tool, and if you try to add anything, and I mean anything, mm -hmm. I tried to add like a cargo liner, and it's like upgrade to the next engine. I was <laughs> like, no, I don't want to spend 4000 to put a plastic tray in the back. I mean, I'm exaggerating, but anytime you try to add a, even this, I just wanted different wheels, upgrade to the next thing. Okay, so this is the only configuration, everything base. And you can get into it for under 30000 in Canada. And we get hosed, as we talk about every week. Yeah, because in the States, the Maverick, as you may know, is nineteen nine nine five without destination. But it comes in just under twenty grand, which is such an attractive price. And, of course, Maverick is also unique because it's the hybrid as the base model, which you really don't see anywhere else. So we talked about it a ton at the time, but you got to always say it. Ford just really was aggressive with that pricing structure, and so far it seems to be paying off. They can't build enough Mavericks. Well, rightfully so. I mean, they are becoming a truck company. Mm -hmm. I mean, what cars do they build that you want other yeah. than the Mustang? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they know it too. Yeah. All right, and then the only other one in the category, and obviously they're the runner for the runner-up, is the Hyundai Santa Cruz, which here in Canada, 41454 including destination. So we're talking about a near $12,000 disparity between the two. Now, there's always... Maverick a, walks away with that category. Yeah, yeah, Hyundai's got a very different philosophy about yes. this particular vehicle. And they, they contented it up. Um, so when we say base, this has already got so much more on it than a lot of other vehicles. Totally, yeah. And in some ways, they're making it kind of dummy-proof. Uh, they don't want you to come in and pick and choose. They're just saying, look, here's everything you need. We've already chosen for you. Just give us the money. 
Yeah. Now, and again, this is Hyundai Canada. In the U.S., you can still get a two-wheel drive Santa Cruz. You can get a base engine. In Canada, you, it's, it's turbo only. It's four-wheel drive only. So, yeah, like you're saying, you get a lot more stuff here. And I don't remember exactly the base price in the U.S., but the Maverick still undercuts it by quite a bit on either side of the border. You're certainly getting a lot more features with the Santa Cruz. Like, there is value in that money. Oh, yeah, the, the value sure. is there. But it's a different play than what Ford did, absolutely. Yeah. Right? But... I'm always about choice, so anytime a manufacturer says, no, I know what you need, that annoys me. <laughs> Fair enough. Alrighty, well, stepping it up now into the midsize category, we're going to work ourselves from the losers up to the winner. Yeah, fair enough. Alright, so starting at the bottom of the list, midsize trucks in Canada, the most expensive truck in this category, the Jeep Gladiator. $52,240 in Canada yeah, to Yeah, wickedly expensive. And, and that's actually, it's four-wheel drive, but it's still just a sport. So, yeah, even, even that truck is pretty base. There's not a ton of options in it. The Gladiator in Canada is crazy, and especially when you consider that in the States, the Gladiator starts at 39 So, yeah, the Americans get, again, a pretty decent deal in the Gladiator. We uh, The Gladiator gets so expensive for us really quickly. Alrighty, and then, so in fourth place, we now have the Nissan Frontier, and this is the Canadian-only King Cab version, right. which is 4 by 4 but it comes in at 40498 a $12,000 improvement over the Gladiator, but still fourth place. Yeah, and still forty grand. but again, this is where we have to start pointing out, because we're about to see this, the Nissan won't sell you a two-wheel drive Frontier north of the border. In the United States, you can get a two-wheel drive Frontier. Once again, that truck starts just a hair under thirty grand in the States. Yeah. So we, And it's not just four-wheel drive. There's other options, too, that are built into our truck. And this is just what we see a lot in Canada. Is kind of like Dad is saying, they take some of the choice out of our hands, and they build a lot of stuff in from base. That's part of the reason why we pay more, and then there's a bigger picture of economics on the border. And <laughs> I, I, I don't understand it. I won't claim to, but there's a lot going on in the pricing of these things. Next. All right. Next on the list, and just squeaking out the frontier by $150, the Toyota Tacoma. Now, in this package, you're going to get 4x4, and you're also going to get the double cab, regular box, and that 3.5 liter V6, and that comes in at $40,350. Yep. in Canada. Another one you can't get to a drive in Canada. Yep. yep. All right. Runner up. <laughs> Drum roll, please. The Ford Ranger. Mm -hmm. The Ford Ranger, and that is the base options with 4x4 included. You can get into in Canada for $36,605, $38,000 after destination fees. Yep, once again, same deal, 4x4 included, and yep. that's the headline when you find out the price of the Chevy Colorado. The Chevy Colorado Canyon are the cheapest mid-sized trucks you can get in Canada right now. You can get into them for $28,248, and that is two-wheel drive, extended cab, long box. Now, it is the work truck, and we were, this is our big asterisk in this. We're uncertain if we can walk in to the dealer right now and order a work truck, or if you need to be a fleet buyer, I don't know. Yeah. But if you can, which I think, why couldn't you? This is the cheapest truck you can purchase. And just to be safe, we also came up with the number of 30128 which is the one trim up. I think it's the LT. And that still edges out the Ranger by 5000 bucks. Yeah, but two-wheel drive. And this two is the drive. one truck that's available two-wheel drive north of the border. So Chevy gives us that option. I don't know how many people buy it, but I do appreciate it. <laughs> and, Matt, I think one bigger, bigger asterisk we got to put on this whole thing is that all of these trucks are unicorns. There's not a bunch of base model, bargain basement trucks sitting around on dealer lots. Yeah, you're it's, not going to the lot and finding. I, if you find one of these order. trucks, that would be like Christmas. Sadly. So it's it's worth looking at to see kind of where the pricing structures start. But actually finding them would be a lot tougher than just, yeah, calling up your local dealership, sadly. <laughs> now, one point I just want to quickly make about Ranger and the GM Twins. They're both in the last year of their current gen. So for 23, we're going to see new Colorado, new Canyon, and we should see a new Ranger. Yeah. So, you know, if you are in the market, it may be an opportunity to snag one when the price is still here because they're only ever going to go up, not down. Fair. That's true. New Tacoma's coming too. New Tacoma. So lots yeah, but that'll be prices. expensive no matter what. Yeah, probably. <laughs> Alrighty. Let's move up to half tons. The right? half ton pickup truck. The one that everybody, this is the one we seem to talk about the most, the $150,000 half ton. Yeah, we're so, going to get to that in the new segment after this. So, so what <laughs> is the cheapest one you can get here in Canada? Well, starting in at fourth place, 
the Toyota Tundra. Now this is the two-wheel drive double cab SR trim with the base twin turbo V6 engine and you mm. can get into it for $44,990, 47 after destination. One difference I saw with the half tons when I was looking through it too is that the half tons are all available two-wheel drive in Canada. That's not something to do with the bigger trucks. Yeah. So we do get into the two-wheel yeah. drives here which is Again, I think it's nice. I don't think everyone needs four-wheel drive, despite the yep. fact that we all deal with the winter. And then, despite the fact that Chevy had the cheaper midsize, in the half-ton category, they come in third place. The Silverado Sierra, regular cab, six-and-a-half bed. Again, work truck designation, two-wheel drive. 38893 here in Canada, or just a hair over 38. Oh, 34, pardon me, in the U.S. Right. And that comes with the two, oh, pardon me, the 2.7 liter turbo. That's the 2.7 turbo. The other, that's the other thing, not necessarily the 8. Yeah, and that's an interesting difference too because the base, you know, Tundra, well, that's a powerful twin turbo V6. The base Silverado, you're just getting that little turbo 4, which is not a bad engine, but that's also going to dictate how different these prices are, right? Yeah. All righty, runner up in the half ton category, the Ford F 150. Now, this is the XL model, regular cab. So this is with the 40-20-40 bench seat in the front, and I mention that because the only option you can change on that truck without upping the price is whether you have vinyl or cloth seats. Huh. Any other change, kind of like with the Maverick, upgrade to this package. Sure. Upgrade so, to this package. So you're saying regular cab, like two-door? Two-door. Regular cab. Yeah, most of the are still regular. bench across oh, the front. When's the last time you saw one of those? You don't, and that's a six-and-a-half foot short bed, V6, two-wheel drive. 4x4, four four, obviously, an option, and that comes in at just a hair under 40, 39,115. Nice. So, while we're getting there, there's one brand we haven't mentioned in the half tons. What is it, Matt? Ram! And it's not the new Ram, <laughs> it's the classic. Yeah. The classic Ram 1500 Tradesman, 4x2, regular cab, V6 with the 8 speed transmission and the 6 foot 4 bet. $36,185 in Canada. And as I mentioned before, there's an asterisk here. That includes a promotion this month. However, even without that promotion, it still edges out the F-150 by almost $2,000. I have looked at Ram Classic building price probably, you know, five times over the last two years. There's always a discount. Yes. They say it's monthly, but it never goes away. And that's why Ram Classic is so cheap, right? That tooling is all paid off. It's just printing money for Ram. The fact that they can still build it so cheap means they can sell it so cheap. And if you walk in the dealership, again, the, the business case is so solid. You can say, do you want that Ram Classic, which has the exact same Hemi as that brand new Ram? And it's going to be, you know, five, ten grand less. It's hard to argue with that. So I think Ram is quietly really kind of killing the game there with, with a really smart move and keeping that Classic. Well, it, it's, it certainly is quiet because we've asked for one. Yeah. I wanted to do one for the channel. And, yeah, you know what? They're selling a pile of them, but they don't really want to publicize it. As a matter of fact... You don't when, know what the mix is either. Well, we, no, when they originally did this carryover, it was supposed to be only one model year because they were changing plants. So they just said, well, we just let this line run out. We're moving to a new plant. Four years later, we're still building classic. I can do the math. <laughs> Somebody's making money. <laughs> so, you know, good on them. Um, and yeah, at least, you know, we've got a, a truck that somewhere comes in under 40 grand. That's nice. Yeah. And again, we talked about the base truck, but then, you know, the classic, I think has four different trims, so you can get a pretty well contented classic oh, yeah. as well. So it's not like you're just stuck with the bargain basement trims going for that truck either. Yeah. Well, Matt, Alrighty. you did a good job, man. Sometimes. I do a little <laughs> research. I come up with numbers and stuff. He didn't always do his homework in high school. I still don't do math. Yeah, lots of great questions, too. Let's take a couple questions before we jump into our next little news segment. Um, Dad, you had a couple one. Someone here says, Dad, interesting you said that Ford is becoming a truck company. Is Dodge moving in that direction, too? You have Ram and Dodge in their vehicle lines, and cohesion confuses me. What is their master plan? Oh, well, you know what? Glad you asked. <laughs> um, 2009... Uh, Chrysler took the Ram trucks and spun it off as its own brand. Up until then, you were buying a Dodge Ram. Now, I know there's a lot of guys still to this day, 13, 13 years later, will still call it a Dodge. But in essence, it has not been Dodge Ram since 2009. Now, at the time, um, if memory serves, Mercedes was still the overlord mm -hmm. over there. And... We felt, when we saw that news, that they were preparing to sell off that particular division um, and then concentrate on other things. 
Now, and, and you know, if you're going to sell something off, it's a lot easier if you package it and say, look, the whole truck business is right here. It's not mixed up with, uh, with Chrysler. It's not mixed up with Dodge. Um, but then it didn't happen. And since that time, much like Jeep, it's become a real profit center oh, yeah. and very much a standalone. As a matter of fact, since Mercedes, you know, they've, again, changed overlords twice. So today with... Uh, Stellantis. 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 Thank you. Yeah, yeah, Stellantis yeah thank you very much. With the Fiat guys, you know, again, uh, they bought them. And I, I can guarantee you one of the reasons they bought them is Jeep and Ram. The rest of the stuff they got right now, eh, it's questionable. We'll see where they go from there. But for the time being, those are the crown jewels, Jeep and Ram. They're going to hold on to them. They make them a pile of money. Yeah. And But what the future will bring, who knows. But anyway, it is positioned to be able to go off on its own completely totally. if somebody came along with enough money. And who knows about Dodge? Like, you don't want to get rid of Challenger and Charger because they're such valuable names, but... Outside of that, Durango, I guess, but I, I don't know what's going to happen with Dodge overall. You know, it's hard to say. I mean, I think, I think honestly, I think Chrysler itself is in greater mortal peril sure. than Dodge. I think Dodge still has more cachet than what Chrysler does. What yeah. does Chrysler even build besides the van? <sighs> you know, yeah. like I don't even, rem- I, I don't even know. know. I think it was the town and country. Is, is it the 300? The 300, I mean, no, the 200's gone. It's gone, yeah. No, yeah the 300 still there, still right? There. Still yeah. the large platform. Don't but pay attention to cars. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> yeah, hopefully that confused you some. <laughs> Sufficiently. Don't worry, Ram will continue to stick Hellcats in everything until it's absolutely impossible to put it in anything else. Yeah, that's fair. All right, well, let's segue. We will come back to the questions, I promise. Um... To the Raptor R. Ford revealed the Raptor R in the past week. This is a a monster beast of an off-road truck. And we know why they did it. They did it because of the Ram TRX. Ram brought out a 700 horsepower truck and Ford could not let that stand. So they had to bring out a 700 horsepower truck. And here it is. Here's the brand new Raptor R. This thing is using a 5.2 liter supercharged V8. It's making 700 horsepower and... Sorry. And Printer. 640 pound feet of torque with a 10 speed transmission. Yeah, so that's the big news is the engine. The other stuff you get with this Raptor R is basically what you already know about the Raptor. It gets standard 37 inch tires, 13 inches of travel in the front, 14 in the rear, a big old dome hood, what they call code orange accents. And then we talked about pricing a lot. The price already, guys, $109,000. U.S. Ooh. So this is a monster truck with a monster price tag, monster horsepower. I don't know. What do you think? Is it too much? Have we gone too far? Or are we just excited to get in and put our foot to the floor? <laughs> I don't think there's ever too much, honestly, because, you know, there's never going to sell very many of these. It's true. No, sure. And I mean, most people have heard the term halo vehicle. That's exactly what these things are. It's It's like... You know, back in the day when I used to get, you know, four or five different car magazines every month. I mean, I loved looking at, you know, Lamborghinis and Ferraris. Never going to own one. Sure. Wasn't ever going to own one. Not even in my dreams, but I still like looking at them. And when it comes to these super trucks, I mean, I think it's cool. I love looking at them. Never going to own one. <laughs> and I think a lot of guys are like that who own trucks. However, you just kind of want to be up on what's out there. And, and we do a little dreaming, but that's what it all is. Yeah, fair enough. I also think, you know, off-road trucks are just, you know, they're so popular right now. So if you're going to make a Halo vehicle, that's where you should kind of go. And the Raptor's amazing. It's such a good package. I'm sure this thing's going to be incredible to actually get out there and, and run through the desert. The suspension on the Raptor is just so good. I mean, that's the only reason we're in this business is because we're going to get to go to the desert. They're going to pay <laughs> us to go. We're going to drive Play it for with free. with their toys. And we're going to drive it for free, and we're going to come home and talk about it. You're right. Yeah, we do get to play with some pretty fun toys. So, yeah, it's definitely cool that Ford went there. Um, And, Matthew, you brought up one interesting point before, too, with Hellcat. Ram has already really publicly said that we know Hellcat's not going to last beyond 2024, maybe. So how long can this realistically last, too? This could honestly be really a a really golden moment for these super trucks because, I mean, we're going to have electric super trucks, to be fair, but for ICE super trucks, I think we might be at peak super truck today, and I think we're only going to go downhill when it comes to gas power from here on out. 
Guess yeah. we'll have to wait and see. If anything, sometimes you realize when a new vehicle like this comes along that you're looking at a future classic. Something that in 25 years guys are going to be hunting for because these things are going to be rare. Sure, you're going to see it and say, has that got the turbo or has it got the V8? <laughs> well, yeah, that was another uh, big nugget of news. So uh, why don't we move back on to questions? There's lots of uh, there guys in the lot. questions. We appreciate you guys. Keep them coming. Yeah, uh, I'll also throw in our uh, little bit of promotion here. There is a nice little donate button there. If you guys uh, can donate us a couple bucks, we always appreciate it. Fuel prices are through the roof these days, so any oh. money you can toss to us helps us make videos, helps us keep on doing what we are doing. Um, so, talking about Raptor, yeah. here's a Raptor question. You see that one, Matt? Yeah. So, do we think that a Ford will make a Raptor Lightning? I think it'd be a cool Hummer EV competitor. I mean, there's no reason why they wouldn't. Yeah, I don't think it's the moment for it now no. because of what we just talked about. They have Raptor R. So, again, give it time. Wait for the ICE sales to come down, and then I think the electric portfolio will get filled and up. And I right? think they just brought Lightning to market. Now, not saying there's not a team of engineers somewhere working on something like this already. Yeah. But they just brought it to market. They're going to work out the bugs, make sure everything's okay, and then we'll bring out the motor. I mean, Tesla didn't roll out the Plaid until they built, you know, a couple hundred thousand units sure. already. Sure. As designed as well, the Lightning is a horrible off-roader. It has like eight inches of ground clearance, and the back end, the whole the motor yeah. sit down low, the axle, all the components and it's sit really low, and it's heavy. Now that's a problem you're never going to quite get around, but um, eventually, I guess. But yeah, it's it's going to need serious packaging changes to be anything close to what a Raptor is today. Let's put it that way. The uh, the base models sit on lots all across America. Everyone wants a more expensive truck with leather seats and chrome. You're not wrong. Well, you're not wrong. I mean, that's why the stuff sells. But I, I dispute the fact that they're sitting on lots. I don't think dealers order them. They just don't Deal them. Dealers don't order them because they don't make any money on them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was more just for that for that diehard guy that wanted to know, how cheap can I get one? Yeah. So here's one for you, Dad. A question for Howard. Uh, would you buy a new Ram diesel right now, or would you go with a Ford or Chevy? Especially pertinent because Dad has a Ram 2500. He bought in 2019, so... I guess now you can just, you know, reflect. Would you uh, have bought something else, or are you happy with the Ram? Well, the short answer with that is that when I'm buying a Ram diesel, what I'm buying is Cummins. I'm buying a company with a 120-year history and uh, that I have a lot of a lot of respect for. And, uh, yeah, that just so happens that Ram built a truck around it, which I'm not unhappy with. But for me, it's, it's that powertrain. So, yeah, that's why I'll go with that uh, rather than the Ford or the Chevy. Yeah, there was talk of a divorce there for a while, too. And maybe those rumors have swirled for a while, but there was the lawsuit, which was messy, and then there was talks of maybe Cummins and Rams splitting up, but that doesn't seem to have come to pass because I think that'd be a mistake. Like you just yeah. said, there's guys like you all around who just want to Cummins, and, well, you got to go to Ram. Right? That's yeah. it. Or Nissan a couple years ago. But. Yeah, but that didn't work out. <laughs> that did not work out, sadly. Um, I got another one here, Matt. Uh, do you guys know if Honda's going to make a Ridgeline Trail Sport? And this is also especially uh, good timing because we actually just got a Pilot Trail Sport. We're testing it here on the channel. Uh, watch for the review. A bit of a spoiler alert. It's not very good. It's not very good in terms of Trail Sport is just one of these faux off-road trims, and it does nothing to make it better off-road. Yeah. It barely even makes it look better. So I guess my point is, if you like the styling, more power to you. I hope they make a Ridgeline Trail Sport, but I wouldn't hold my breath for like a two-inch lift and bigger tires. I would love that on the Ridgeline. That's not I don't happening. think it's happening. No. Yeah. And they have uh, the HPD now on the Ridgeline, which is pretty cool. I think it actually looks pretty good. Steve, you have yeah. a video on this one. Can you fit a rear-facing car seat in a Toyota Tacoma? Yeah, absolutely you can. Um, I have a Graco Forever, which is a big old car seat. It's one of the convertible car seats, so it goes from rear-facing to forward-facing. It's one of the biggest ones. I guess here's what it comes down to. I've driven every midsize truck. I can fit a rear-facing car seat in every midsize truck easily. The question is, how much do I have to give up? Now, I can fit a rear-facing behind me in a Tacoma, but I am pretty snug up to the wheel because I have to move forward a considerable amount. I'm also six foot two. I'm a big dude. Of course, I'm going to have to move forward more because I like to sit further back. Tacoma's pretty small back seat. Um, Colorado Canyon is one of the better ones. Jeep Gladiator has a nice and big back seat too. So there are better options if you're looking for space. But if the straight question is, will it fit legally? Absolutely, it will. No problem. 
And he's got a video on it. Go check out the channel. Yeah. I got into all this. We get a lot of questions about car seats because I have three young ones, all under four years old, so I'm constantly dealing with car seats. And uh, we get a lot of questions, so I tried to do a bit of a series. If you guys like it, let me know. I can do more. Um, the Tacoma video did okay. It didn't get a huge response, but it's also more of, uh, you know, informational. Yeah, it's very specific. Sure. As long as you people keep having kids, you got to deal with questions like that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. What else? Someone is angry that they took the base uh, Ridgeline model away in Canada. And yeah, I, I don't know why. You know, again, I wouldn't hate having a front-wheel drive Ridgeline. Oh, stop, stop. Give us more options, you know? How do you guys feel about auto stop start and do you use it daily? Oh, I get, I feel like there's a big, like a lot of people don't like it. I yeah. have no issue with it. And I'll actually also say that when it first came out, I felt like these systems weren't good. Like early, don't ask me why, the one that sticks out of my head is an early Jaguar that we had. And, and driving that thing, it was just like every time it would start up, it was, Vroom! you felt it. Today, the systems are so seamless and I got no issues with it. I leave it on all the time. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, particularly with the price of gas, I mean, what auto stop start, what that translates to is, depends on how much you drive, particularly uh, in the city, but it's anywhere from 2 to 5% of your fuel bill a year. I mean, That's you know. That's a significant savings. Dollars, yeah. dollars, right? And I know a lot of people are concerned about wear and tear. That's the biggest question we get on the dealership sure. side of things. Yeah. Most manufacturers have a, lim have a number of starts built into that starter. And your, your ECM will actually count them. Now, forgive me, I'm going back to Toyota here, but I remember it was around 375,000 restarts. And at that point, it'll turn the check engine light on and tell you to replace your starter. Yeah. But besides that, there's no other real wear and tear to any other components that aren't designed to take that. Yeah, plus most manufacturers have heard all of these complaints, and I don't remember a vehicle I've got in where you can't turn it off. That's like it. Too. Most vehicles got yeah, a button. Yeah, you can shut them off. Stab the button and then forget about it. One of the annoying things is some manufacturers make you turn it off every time, and some you turn it off once and it stays. That's a difference. Yeah. But still, they recognize that a lot of people just don't like the feeling, I guess, and uh, so you can shut it off. That's it. But yeah, like you said, I don't know. It seems like a simple solution and uh, a smart one. Um, what do you guys think of the F-150 Tremor being offered with the 5 liter V8? That's a weird question. I mean, it's a good motor. It's a great truck. Like, I don't know what, what feelings we're supposed to have on this. Yeah, I don't know. I'm trying to remember now just to make sure the F-150 Tremor is available with the V8 and it's not EcoBoost only. But, I mean, hey, it's nice that Ford still has the V8. They feel it's necessary, obviously. We know EcoBoost is over 50%, probably more than that today. So, V8's not a big sales split for them, but... You know, like I said, I think they feel it's necessary when all the other guys still have a V8, they want to have one too. And that Again, cool. choice, uh, what Ford is doing and has always done well is in the truck market, they offer you this the most choices. Be it, uh, you know, be it engines, transmissions, rear ends, everything. So that you can build the truck that you want. And on, on mm. the tail of options, we also got another question about mm. why do no manufacturers make trucks with stick shifts? Okay, let's sales. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, simple answer, but quickly let's go over the list. Toyota Tacoma, Jeep Gladiator, and I think that's it. Those are the two available with manuals. Frontier yeah, went away, it. Colorado went away, so I think that's it now. But you can still get a Tacoma and a Gladiator. And, and my favorite thing is you can get those trucks in the fun trims in a Rubicon or a TRD Pro with a manual. So they're there for fun. There's yeah, no I, other reason. Yeah. And Matt said it. Nobody buys manuals. I, I wish I, there was more manuals. I don't know what Nobody the numbers are, but like... Less than ten percent, less yeah. than five percent of vehicles oh, sold. No, less, less, less than that. When in, when, in North America, anyway. When when the manuals, when Ford abandoned the manuals, and I'm going back now, fifteen years ago, I was the guy down in Detroit going, "No, you can't do that." And they, you know, I talked to the engineer afterwards. He goes, "Look," he said, "the take rate is under one percent." He goes, "We years just." Ago. It costs us too much to leave those parts on the line yeah. and have that one truck in a hundred come down and have to be configured with the manual, so we abandoned it. That was the shift that I saw, and I mean, I've been doing this for 10 years. When I first started, the manuals were still the base option in most cheap cars, and then the shift that I saw is eventually manuals became cost options. You had to pay for the manual, and they're going to give you the automatic, and that was obviously the, the early signs of this isn't going to last. Nobody's buying it. It's now more expensive to build. Yeah. Anyways. But yeah, I mean, we all like manuals that have their place. 
you know, I would never give it up in, in Big Green. I love the fact that that thing's manual. You just, no. it's more engaging. It's so fun. Speaking of Big Green, Steve, was driving Big Green in the mud more satisfying than a new trail-ready pickup? I saw and heard the triumph in your voice. I said a comment in the video, and I'm sticking to it. There is something super satisfying about driving an old, dumb truck. Because the only brain in the truck is my brain, unlike a new truck which has a bunch of things going on. It's thinking, and there's a drive mode. New trucks are so capable, and I think I'm always blown away getting into a brand new $50,000 truck, what it's capable of doing. Um, but Big Green is impressive in a whole different way. It just, yeah, like I said, it's this old, quote-unquote, dumb truck, but it just is so capable with so few upgrades. Four-inch lift, 35-inch tires. I guess the short answer to your question is yes. Driving Big Green, to me, is a little bit more satisfying and, and I'll also put an asterisk, I don't own the new trucks. So when I'm off-roading in the new trucks, <laughs> I can't go too crazy. Whereas in Big Green, I really let it loose because I know if it breaks, at least I'm breaking my own stuff. So, But still, yeah, I said it in the video too. If you truly just want a cheap, super fun off-roading experience, go buy an old truck. Skip the new trucks. <laughs> And we did have fun out there. A lot easier to fix, too. All you need to do is bang on it with a hammer. Yeah, Dad just hit it, man. That was it. Somebody <laughs> said we need a, a Truck King branded Big Green Hammer that stays with Big Green at all times. The hitting hammer. This is <laughs> smack stuff. <laughs> oh, man. All righty. Um, no, I'm going to jump over that one. That one doesn't make any sense. Um, do you guys know anything about a Cummins gas engine in the future? Interestingly, were we not reading, this is now going a couple weeks back, were we not reading about Ram, specifically, or, or Stellantis, rather, mm -hmm. developing a hydrogen combustion right. platform? For heavy duty. For heavy duty. Specifically for HDs. So, I don't know anything about a Cummins gas engine, but I would yeah, imagine I they'd, they'd be involved in that type of a program. Uh, yes, I would also, because they're HDs, it would make sense. Yeah. Um, but I, yes, also have heard nothing, heard nothing of a Cummins uh, gas engine. Yeah. I've read about some research they're doing, and the thing I'm going to throw out there, because I'm trying to remember exactly... I mean, yes, it's a gas engine, but not in the conventional sense. Um, they're trying to apply kind of the, the same sort of high-pressure diesel technology to a vaporized gas. Like a compression uh, ignition gas engine? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah okay. So so please, if you know what I'm talking about, don't call me stupid. But that's what I remember. And so it's as, it's as much as I've seen right now. But you know what? I mean, with those guys are always working on something. Of course. Yeah. So, always. you know, let's see what comes up. Yeah. I want to see diesel electric, man. Diesel electric trains. Like have the diesel, which acts as the generator, and yeah. get out there. And well, that's been that around since forever. Yeah, that's not new tech. Because somebody, oh. somebody did the math, and yeah. they figured out that the electric will actually move more than the cost of the diesel to generate the electricity. That's it. So why aren't we doing it? What's going on? Well, we are, but for some reason, you know, it's a good <laughs> point. Because down to it's trucks, a I good guess. point because it's only ever been Real used on, on big vehicles. Or there used to be a whole fleet of diesel electric buses, buses. in Toronto. Yeah. Hmm. So, again, obviously at some point it made sense. Yeah, interesting. I guess we'll have to wait and see. Everyone, like you said, is working hard to figure out what this electric thing is going to do and where it's going to go. So, I mean, on, on the heels of that... Do you guys have any info on where automakers are at using solid-state batteries in EVs? Yes and no. I actually did a little bit of reading on this like last week. Um, the big rumor that I read, and don't quote me, but Toyota is coming to market very slowly with a series of EVs because they have signed, I think it was eight or nine new patents for a solid-state battery platform. So if they're working on it, you know everybody else is working on it. And, I mean, Toyota is, is famous for last to the party, already feels old. But in this case, reading that they're actually thinking ahead and going for it. Solid state makes the most sense. You could run dual charging. You could run faster charging. Everything about it seems better. Um, Feasibility-wise, production-wise, tougher, more expensive. That's the biggest thing with it Yeah. at the end of the day. And, I mean, in the same vein as we're currently suffering the chip shortage where are you going to build them? Yeah, battery production constraints are probably already real and just going to keep getting... Yeah, well, they're, 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 they're furiously building plants. Um, I read the Detroit Free Press every morning because they carry some of the best automotive coverage. And, you know, billions of dollars are being allocated to building uh, new battery plants. 
and the manufacturers are making doing partnerships with different companies. And but the point being is that yeah, when I say they're building them, they're not built yet. So there's a lot of shovels in the ground, but honestly, from the way that it all kind of rolls out, it's two, three years before that stuff's going to start hitting the mainstream. So yeah. we're in the building phase for, for sort of this next, um, you know, mobility future. Yeah, but that's a good point, right? Because right now, it's everyone's playing the guessing game is where are we going to be in 10 years? And, you know, is solid state going to be the thing? And if that's going to be the thing, I better get into it today, right? To, yeah. Uh, and everyone's hedging their bets in different directions. So it is interesting to see True. how it all kind of yeah. lays down, right? Reminds me of beta and VCR. There you go, yeah. Which <laughs> how one, old do you have to be to, to remember over? that? And you're in, the, <laughs> you're in the store and the salesman goes, oh, beta's so much better. And I know a lot of guys that went down that rabbit hole. And then a couple of years later, of course, VCR won out. VHS, pardon me. VHS won out. And beta was, if you bought a beta, you were a schnook. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go yeah wait and see all righty um you want to jump to our uh the questions that we received from email yeah that's and a we'll good idea give some people a chance to get caught up there sure yeah we do have two questions that came in over email uh the email to remind you guys is hey h-e-y at trucking.ca send us any questions you might have as so long as they're truck related yeah that's fair i guess okay my my beauty techniques are my own <laughs> Um, so, the question comes from John, a huge fan from Buffalo, New York. Uh, John's buddy is in the market for a truck. He really wants a half ton. He says he wants a half ton because he's going to get a camper, but he doesn't know which ones to get. Now, he works in the city, so city and maneuverability for parking is key. So, his question is, which half ton has the best right space maneuverability and visibility as well? So, I think we start this one. I did pull numbers. We'll get into that in a second. And I, I understand what you said about wanting a half ton. Let's recognize that most mid-sized trucks will pull up to 7,000 pounds. You get a camper with a 5,000 pound GVWR, you're doing okay if it's only two of you. Um, that's my first suggestion. Get a mid-sized truck. Skip the half ton. Every half ton is going to be hard to park in the city. They're, They're big. Just big. They're big. It, it is what it is, right? Um, mid-sized trucks today are what half ton trucks were 10 years ago, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. So that's the first bit of advice is if you can skip the half ton, skip the headache, get yourself a mid-sizer, it is a significant difference in the city. Absolutely. Um, moving on. So like I said, though, I did pull a whole bunch of numbers. Now, if you want the absolute best turning circle on a half ton, it's going to be a Ford F-150. But there's an asterisk again. That is with the shortest wheelbase. It's only 122-inch wheelbase. The F-150 has the most configurations of any truck when it comes to wheelbase. That's a regular cab So that's going to be a regular cab, little shorty bed. It's not going to be a quote-unquote popular truck, right? Yeah. The turning circle there, though, is 41.2 feet curb to curb when you get up into what i would consider a regular f-150 145 inch wheelbase that's 47.8 feet curb to curb and those numbers if they're all right there in the mid 40s a ram 1500 you're talking about 46.2 feet or 48.7 feet depending on wheelbase a silverado crew cab is 46 feet a tundra is either 48 or 49 feet and a titan is 48 feet so again, they're all right in that area. You're only going to get a couple feet here or there. Maybe those are going to make a big difference to you. But again, having driven these trucks so much, I think the real world difference there doesn't come across. Every half done feels big and unwieldy and, in the city. And then also go drive them all and check out the sight lines for yourself, depending on where you sit. That's fair. Because everybody sits differently. You're higher, you're lower, you're further back, you're further forward. And I mean, like the new Tundra has got those ridiculous louvers in the hood that kind of eat up some of your sight lines. Yep. Some of the hoods are a little more swept out, so you can see a little nicer just yeah. for tight, tight maneuvers. Anyway. The one other point I was going to say, and exactly what you just said, watch the off-road trims. Because when you get into a trail boss, everyone wants to give you a bigger hood. And it's kind of funny. It's counterintuitive. You get the off-road truck, the hood gets taller, you can see less. Same thing with the Rebel, all of those trims. So if you don't need the off-road stuff, skip those as well. You don't need the big Big power bulge hood just one more thing to see over or in that same vein you get all the cameras fair that's for a great point. slow speed I, well maneuver, there yeah. is seven cameras and there's a yeah. reason for that because yeah. you can't see your corners that's a great point and every brand has full 360 degree cameras now the only kind of caveat there is you got to go up usually a couple trims to get the option but definitely get the cameras for parking in the city they're so good so yeah. helpful yeah it'll help you to not scratch things up i love the down the side view you get in most cars now where you're literally looking right down where your wheels are so if you're pulling up to a curb you don't want to curb your wheel too bad you can see you can get right there 
uh, yeah, it's uh, it's very helpful to have cameras. <laughs> as good as truck drivers as we are, we've driven trucks our whole lives, but still, it's nice to have those views when you're downtown. Yep. So get the cameras. <laughs> and at the end of the day, the oldest advice you're ever going to get, just go out and drive them all, and you'll end up buying the red one. Yep. There you go. Um, okay, we did, uh, I don't know if you want to talk about your Ram 2500 conversation. One guy reached out to Dad specifically to talk about his 2500 do you remember what he had to say? What you had to say? Did you give good advice or bad advice? Probably bad, but... <laughs> uh, we talked... Uh, he had some questions, particularly uh, having to do with the Cummins. Uh, probably the, the greatest chatter at the moment in that world is the recall with the CP4 fuel injection. There's a couple of other Mickey Mouse ones. Uh, he also just wanted to get a sense of, of how it towed. Um, Because what he was looking at tow is sort of in the same weight range in that sort of 10, 12,000 GVWR where my trailer's at. So, I mean, we had these these conversations. But um, I've said it. I have several videos on the channel where I kind of go through over the last two years the ownership experience. Um, I love the engine. It's got the power for whatever I'm doing. And I tow, like, a lot, more than most people. So... Uh, even though it's funny because I keep track of that mileage, and so of the total, I think I got 40,000 kilometers on there right now. So I've towed about 20,000 kilometers. So, you know, half the time I'm towing. Um, the thing with the Ram is that it's it's incredibly well placed. Like, I mean, it, it's just sure footed, it, it carries that weight on its back. It's very, very confident. And that has a lot to do with a three quarter ton chassis. And I'm always saying, you know, just. You know, you don't want the tail wagging the dog. So if you're the guy who goes, no, no, my half-ton Ford can tow 14 and a half thousand pounds, well, all I got to say is I hope I'm not around you when you're doing that. <laughs> so that's the sort of things we talked about. I think he went okay. away happy. I think he's going to buy one. Okay, there you go. Yeah. Is that it? Shut up now? Yeah, no, okay. that was good. Thanks. <laughs> Appreciate it. You did it old school. You had a phone conversation. Who does that? I did. I called him. Sure. <laughs> I don't like typing that much. Um, I got two here. Sure, go ahead. The first one is, you and I actually talked about this two weeks ago. Somebody asked, isn't the new Colorado reveal tomorrow? And it yeah, is. It absolutely is. Yes. It is. Um, we can share nothing about it today, but be uh, assured that if you come back tomorrow morning... 7 a.m. I, I, I thought it was 10 a.m. Oh, I don't know. It's tomorrow morning. It will drop on the channel. You're going to get every bit of information about the Colorado. Uh, ZR2, all the work trims, everything is in there, so... Come back to the channel. We can't talk about it any more than that. Okay. But yes, it's tomorrow. Yeah, it is tomorrow. Yeah, July 28th. And then uh, you guys haven't talked much about Cybertruck. Is it even going to come to production? Interesting note this week. Yeah, I did. uh, You know about that? Yeah. Well, you said. Well, what I saw is that a little bit of news, and it's it's not for North America, but like Australian customers, Tesla called them and said, hey, we're going to give you your money back because I don't think it's ever going to actually get there. So this is not what a surprise. Yeah, this was not North American specific, but they did start doing that. Um, on the flip side, I think they've been really smart that we've seen every now and then they leak something. Oh, a Cybertruck was driving over here. It was caught over there. It's at the wind tunnel. It's here. They 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 keep the the media rolling. They're not stupid, right? No. Um, Tesla has proven over and over that will they build it? Yes. Will it be very late? Absolutely. So I don't know when to expect it. You know, 24, 25. I, I, I have no clue on the timeline anymore. But I, I do believe it will arrive. I also don't believe it will look like it did when it was yeah, first I don't think brought it's going to look anything like what it came out as May, Maybe close, but not exactly like no. that. But Tesla, man, they've almost shot themselves in the foot because they brought such hype to electric trucks, and now everyone's jumping in before them. You know, like Cybertruck was such a big deal when it was released, and now here we are, and it's just crickets, right? So, you know, Tesla, smart marketing company, but if they could have actually had their production ramp up when it should have ramped up, they could have been on the road today, and, you know, not so many people would be going to Ford for a Lightning, right? But that that is what it is. So, yeah, if we just look at, if we look at history, then we know Tesla will probably build it, and it will probably be very late. <laughs> what else? Yeah. Uh, Mr. Dougie Doo wanted to know your uh, your hair care products. He wanted the whole list. <laughs> uh, yeah, write to me at hey at trucking.ca. Yeah. 
I think the bigger piece of Tesla vaporware right now is the the new Roadster because that like at least Cybertruck we're getting this little bit of like bleeding information. The Roadster is like here it is, give us two hundred fifty thousand dollars, and now it's just been dead silence. So that's an even crazier one. Um, we got a couple uh, a couple of Toyota Tundra questions, and he's rolled them out in several here. So I'll try and roll them into one. Uh, Toyota Tundra longevity better than other 1500 truck brands and if you were to spend your money today on a Tundra would it be the current new truck or the previous gen mm, good question yeah um, Toyota is usually pretty consistent with their uh, quality they usually spend a lot of time on it and having worked on the dealership side of things if they get it wrong they typically fix it so there are a lot of brands out there with quiet recalls or they just pretend like the problem doesn't exist. Toyota, I mean, hell, we put new frames in Tacomas when they turned into s dust. So Toyota backs their stuff, even if they screw it up. I, from that standpoint alone, I've always said that they are great. And that's just me. I'm a fanboy. No, I get the <laughs> same feeling. I think, uh, reliability aside for just a second, what, I comes down, what it comes down to for me is that the new Tundra feels more like the big three in terms of it feels quieter, it feels more comfortable to drive, but it just doesn't have, there was something about the old Tundra that was rough and tumble and raw, and you had a big V8, and you had that torquey rear end. That, that truck stood out to me in the crowd. The new Tundra is good, but it stands out less to me. It's more like everything else. So for those reasons, honestly, if I had to pull the trigger, I'd get a 5.7 and get the old Tundra, even though I would suffer for the ride and the handling and how noisy and it the is. Gas and, so. bill. and the gas bill. And the gas. Well, I mean, that, that alone. That I, I admit it, but there was something about that truck that the new truck, it's not, it's not quite there I, for me. Yeah. The new V6 twin turbo, I mean, I got a lot of miles behind the wheel in that thing. And, you know, it's hard to say what's going to happen down the road because when everybody says, oh, the 5.7, it was great. Well, yeah, you've got like 17 years worth of, of performance data that you can, you know, show people and say, well, this is why it's great. So we don't have that with the new engine. But my gut just tells me that it is also, in five years' time, going to become one of those engines that people will point at and say, well, if you want something and don't want trouble, that's the one you want. That's, that's just a personal opinion. But I get that, like I say, from all that seat time from Vancouver to the Arctic Ocean. So I had a, I had a few hours to think about it. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. And yeah, you don't forget about the hybrid either. That thing is just so powerful. There's no doubt the new hybrid's great too. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Uh, Sharif wants you to jump big green, similar to the uh, the TRX uh, river jump there. I saw so I saw him say that. I don't think it would last a jump. I don't think so. Um, it's it's been good though, all things considered. Like I honestly ex have expected something to break many times. I've had that stupid issue with the the uh, fuel pump with the um, throttle body fuel injection. Yeah, that, one, canister. that one's popped up a couple times. I didn't have the right battery at first. But besides that, like, you know, I always figure I'm going to snap an axle shaft yeah, or something. But, and you know, so far, that truck has been bulletproof. The everything is good. Everything's but. about the money, Sharif. If you want to pony up, or you and a bunch of your buddies, 50 grand, I can guarantee you I'll get him oh, to we'll jump, jump all day we'll get him to jump a river. You are correct about that. Yes, yep. we can find the river. No problem. <laughs> we need to start the GoFundMe right now. 55, 55000 I'll light it on fire before it takes off, too. <laughs> Oh my gosh, landing in big green on that suspension oh. would be insane. You'd get right back off the ground, no doubt about yeah. it. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Question is, would you still have a, a, an axle when you are done? Yeah, yeah, I don't know. At least the airbags aren't going to go off because there isn't any. <laughs> <laughs> like when people jump the new Raptors and it lands and it's boom, all the airbags no, go off. No, in that truck you are your own airbag. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. That's uh, your answer. Am, am I the only person interested in a hybrid V8? I still want the V8 growl, but my 13.8 MPG and my 5.7 Tundra. You're getting 13.8 and a 5.7. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Do you sure. shut it off going downhill? <laughs> um, my 13.8 miles per gallon is starting to hurt. You're thinking about it like liters per hundred MPG, right? 13.8 is brutal. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, that is terrible. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, right. That's awful. You're right. I, I don't do that conversion in my head very quickly. Yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah. Um... I don't know. They're just counterintuitive. Like, I think it's the old question of, this is something the internet would love to dream of, but if someone built it, six guys might buy it, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, I love the idea, too, of a hybrid V8, 
But it just, yeah, they're counterintuitive. Why would you have a thirsty engine? Less, less cylinders, less fuel. It's just, it's simple math. I mean, and there is a Hemi with e-torque. That's not exactly a hybrid V8, but it's something. You know? <laughs> it not is, that it ever did anything. You know, it's a battery strapped onto the, the Hemi anyway, so give it a break. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, I see a question here. I can go ahead and jump on it from Wes. Uh, Wes is new to the channel. He loves it, and hey, he Wes. wants to find out what happened with TFL. Um, it, That's a bad story. <laughs> no, luckily, it's stop. Right. He starts shaking when we talk about it. Uh, when Roman comes up, no, it's a it's a good story. Um, you know what, Wes? I just I was loving it at TFL, but I decided to come back here to trucking and do my own thing and work with these two guys because over there I was just working with Roman and the fellas, and I mean Dad was getting dragged along on the shoots anyway, so <laughs> it it felt inevitable that I would just uh, yeah jump back home and start my own channel. And you know what? Regardless of the rumors, Roman was super supportive. I can only ever say nice things about him because he was really, really nice and saying, yeah, go start the channel and, and have a good time. That's true. Well. He, he was a gentleman. On the heels yeah. of that, I kind of trolled them last week. Yeah. And I feel bad about it. But wow. I just Roman did a short on their uh, lightning drive to, the, to Alaska, and he said right in it, he said, this is the farthest north you can drive in North America. And I said, no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I said, you guys went in the States. Yes, that's as far north as you can get. But not technically, in Canada. <laughs> technically, Tuck the Hack Tuck is further north I, than Dead Horse. I was, I, I felt very keyboard warrior esque right in that one. And after I hit send, I was like, oh, I probably shouldn't have done that. Yeah. <laughs> but I did put a smiley face and say good luck at the end. There you go. <laughs> so yeah, no. Luckily, it was all good things. When I run into those guys, we bug each other. They like to get in the videos. I like to get in their videos. So. Luckily, there's enough room in the truck universe for all of us. Yeah, somehow, right? <laughs> thanks to thanks to all you guys watching. So yeah. uh, we appreciate it. Big and time. Uh, your head would go through the roof if you jump big green. Yeah, yes. that's safe to say. Yes, you would. <laughs> I would not be a good time. <laughs> but we can try it out. That said, if the money is there, absolutely. We'll do a big green wreck at fundraiser. $50,000. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a bad idea. Oh, man. So, anything else going on out there in the truck world? I think we're... we're oh, does anybody a care? Quiet tonight. We usually have some more debate going on. Oh, Mark just came in with a fresh one. Best three-quarter ton gas motor. Um, which, yeah, I mean, we haven't been in them recently, but I am a fan of that new Ford 7 liter. I mean, it's a 7 liter. It's awesome. 7.3? 7.3. Thank you, seven Godzilla. Three. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That thing, when they dropped it, I mean, it's powerful. It's right through the lineup, right up to their medium-duty trucks. Yeah. I'm and, it's, and it's an old-school, it's a simple motor. So I think it has longevity. Yeah. They're using it in motorhomes. Yeah, thanks, Frank. Dougie Doo, 7-3. They got me. You guys are on it. I appreciate it. Keeping us honest. We need somebody to do that. Well, that's my job. <laughs> Yeah, you know what, folks? I think that's it. Uh, we already said it. Brand new Chevrolet Colorado coming in the morning. So make sure you come back here to the channel to see my uh, news report on it. It's going to have all the info in it. Uh, what else do we got? What else We're... did you pull up with in the driveway? Uh, yeah, we well, Bronco. Yeah, we got a new Bronco Wild Track. And actually, what's more exciting, because we're not actually shooting a review on that one, but we are going to drive the Bronco Raptor and the Bronco Everglades. That's coming up in a couple of weeks. About three weeks. And maybe more excitingly, we just compared a Ford F-150 Tremor to a Toyota Tundra TRD Pro. So that's going to be an epic off-road comparison, and it's coming up uh, hopefully within the next week. So stay tuned to the channel. we got lots of stuff coming. Always something going on. Send us an email at heyatrucking.ca. And uh, that is it, folks. I hope you have yourself a good two weeks, and we'll see you soon. Thanks a lot. Take care now.